than our dreams. One got around to your full accomplishment, and we are happy to welcome you here and want to welcome you back at any time you're in this area and you feel like you drop in to see us, because this will be the permanent home of the Laundry Workers Union. Uh, we have um, so many people here today at, uh, in public office, but I would not attempt to try to introduce them all. If I do, I'm in trouble. Uh, I'm sure I'd leave someone out. But uh, we are happy to have you here with us. We're happy to have all the elected officials who are not running for office. We're glad to have you here with us today. And we know that you are our friends or you wouldn't be here. We realize that book. We have a very brief program. We have some remarks to be made by some very good people that you know. Some of them are strangers. But to say a stranger is a friend you've never met. That's the way I've always operated. I felt that strangers was a friend I'd never met. And I always looked forward to meeting them because I felt like they would be my friend. Uh, we have um, with us on the stage at this time. On my right is President Carl Jones of Local 218. I'd like him to stand. Next to him is the young man from Chicago, the General Secretary of Trade of the Laundry Workers International Union. His name is John Fagan. Come up. <laughs> Next to him is the General Counsel of Local 218, one of the outstanding labor lawyers in the United States. I didn't say the South, I said the United States. Joe Jacob. <laughs> Next to him is the Director of Organization, Mr. W.T. Archer. He just served his apprenticeship with Local 218, 27 years, I believe it is. Next to him is a distinguished young man who is president of the Georgia State Federation of Labor AFL-CIO, Herb Mabry. <laughs> Next to him is my boss, Francis Abercrombie. <laughs> Getting behind me is Miss Fair who is uh, a longtime staff member of Local 218 and doing a marvelous job in the field. <laughs> On my left is the commissioner's wife, and Mrs. Carwell. <laughs> and next is our guest of the day, uh, the speaker of the day, uh, Commissioner Sam Carwell. <laughs> next to him is the former general counsel for the State Department of Labor and an outstanding attorney, Mr. Murray Silver. Next to him is Mr. E.T. Al Carey, who heads the Civil Rights Department of the FL CIO and a very good friend of the Laundry Workers Union, Al Carey. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to call on uh, Mr. Silver to make a presentation. Uh, Mr. Abercrombie, I thought these roses were for me, and I'm upset now to know that I must present them to one of the most adorable woman in Georgia, uh, the lady that uh, told me shortly after she got married that uh, our guest speaker for this evening said he was going to put her in labor, and he did for a number of years. <laughs> a gorgeous lady, a dear friend, the First Lady of Labor in Georgia, Mrs. Sam Caldwell. <laughs> Next, I'm going to call on President Jones. I think he has a few remarks and probably call on someone for a presentation. President Jones. Commissioner, platform guests, and friends. As president of the Laundry Workers Union Local 218, I welcome you. Since it's late in the evening, I won't prolong the ceremonies. At this time, I will call on Sister Eloise Fair to make a presentation of flowers. Ms. Fair. Thank you, Brother Jones. It is indeed an honor to make this presentation to you today, and I'd like to 
uh, present this to the most outstanding lady in our life and the lady behind the boss of our organization, one lady that we love to work with, is Mrs. E.L. Abercrombie. Better known, better known as Francis. To you, Francis, may I say this, as I once told your husband, when we get to heaven and you aren't there, we're going to paint your face on the golden stair. And if you aren't there by judgment day, then we know you must have gone the other way. <laughs> But I tell you what we are going to do. We're all coming down to hell just to be with you. <laughs> you follow me, you might have to come down. Huh? <laughs> what some people say about me anyway. <laughs> At this time, I want to call on the former counsel of the Department of Labor, Georgia Department of Labor, to introduce our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Murray Silver. I think he knows the commissioner about as well or better than anyone in this room, and I'm sure that uh, he might not talk too long because he don't want to get into a gray area, but he's going to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Silver. As I was uh, getting ready to leave home, uh, my dear wife Barbara said, if you got your remarks prepared for introducing Sam Caldwell, and I said, frankly, no, if I've got to prepare remarks about Sam Caldwell after as many years as I know him, I'm in a hell of a shape. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a distinct, distinct privilege and a high honor for me to be here with you this afternoon. Uh, it's always marvelous to be with E.L. Abercrombie under any circumstances, and it seems as though in the last two or three weeks, he and my, and my paths have crossed on numerous occasions, starting with the, the, the lovely banquet at the Regency honoring him with the Roosevelt Award. It's always a great pleasure to be with Abby. I have known uh, our main speaker for approximately 10 years. When I first met him, the thing that Im he impressed me with is that he wanted to be a public servant, and after he made a determination that he was going to run for the Commission of Labor of Georgia, in 1966, he said, I pledge to you that I will be the best commissioner of labor that Georgia has ever had. I was proud, tremendously pleased and gratified to have served with him and worked with him daily for several years as a general counsel of that department. I know him to be a man of great integrity, probably possessed of more guts than any man that I know of in politics in Georgia, completely honest, and a person who has indelibly etched in his mind one word, and that is loyalty. Sam Caldwell is not only my good friend, he is the good friend and the very best friend that the working people of Georgia have ever had sit in an executive position in the state of Georgia. He has kept his personal commitment to me and that he is the best commissioner of labor ever in the history of the state. And I want you to know as a sidelight that just recently he was a recipient of an international award for a program that he fostered, that he designed, that had to do with uh, pre-trial intervention, a program that he worked on and devised and developed. 
and received international recognition for its immediate success in the state of Georgia. It's a great pleasure, always a personal pleasure, for me to present to you my dear friend and the greatest commission of labor in the United States, Sam Caldwell. Thank you very much, Murray Silver, Mr. E.L. Abercrombie. And I'm not going to attempt to call all of the names here on the, the so-called head table today or to recognize all of the distinguished people in the audience. I do want to say, first of all, to Murray Silver that you know, I always hate for Murray to introduce me because his introductions are always longer than my speeches. <laughs> but he is a dear friend. I appreciate those remarks very much. And I want to say something else. I've, you know, I've sat at a few head tables before, but this is the most plush head table that I've ever seen. This is also the most plush building that I've ever seen, and I think it is very fitting that the laundry workers <coughs> under E.L. Abercrombie, who's been a longtime friend of mine, I think it's very fitting that certainly one of the most beautiful buildings, one of the most beautiful headquarters I've seen is the headquarters of the laundry workers. You know, when you look back to 1941, when, when Abby started in the old Kimball house, I think at that time he had one small room and he had a desk and one chair when he started out. And then later on in the 1960s, when they were located on Forsyth Street, all of this time Abby was with the laundry workers. And then here today we see this very fine headquarters. You know, to me it is somewhat of a symbol. To me it shows the confidence that the membership of laundry workers have had in their leadership. To me it shows the great leadership the laundry workers exemplified by our friend Abby. So I want to say to Abby that I'm very proud for him. I want to say to all of you here in the audience, you know today we have many candidates for many offices here in, in the audience today. Always like these political years and I think this political year is even more unique than many of the others. You know traveling around the state we have bigger audiences this year than we've had in the past at, at a lot of political rallies. 90% of the audience, Abby, is the candidates and their staff because we, because we have so many candidates for governor and so many for lieutenant governor and, and we even have one too many candidates for commissioner of labor, but we have, but I always enjoy these rallies and there are many people here in the audience today that, that I want to say to you, I'm very grateful for all of the assistance you've given me in the past. I think most of the people in the audience, uh, uh, really, I could call by their first name. I can remember in two previous campaigns when you have helped me a great deal. I want to say also that I'm grateful to the laundry workers grateful to Abby for the very fine support that he has always given me, grateful to his members, Mr. Herb Maber who's here, and Al Kara and Joe Jacobs, and I could call a lot of other names. You know, I'm Commissioner of Labor today because so many good people have always helped me and helped to elect me Commissioner of Labor. There's so many things that I could say about Abby. You know, we had a testimonial for him here a few weeks ago, and they said so many good things about him then, it would take me an hour here today to repeat all of them. 
But everyone in the audience here knows Abby. Everyone knows what a wonderful fellow he is, what a dedicated man he is. Everyone knows how much he's done for the labor movement in Georgia. And you know, the labor movement in this state has certainly been growing in the past few years. I can remember a time not too many years ago when candidates running for almost any office would not come to a dedication of, of uh, this type. I can remember when candidates running for statewide office did not want the open endorsement of, of the labor movement. But yet you find today that every candidate running for every office is seeking the labor movement endorsement openly. They're proud to get it. And I think it's a tribute to the leadership of these people here in the labor movement. It's a tribute to the membership of labor unions all over this state. The other people here that I'm very grateful to, and I... You know, I want to say one thing about Marguerite Schott. She, uh, Marguerite has done a splendid job today, and I want to recognize her for that because she's a very dear friend of mine, and I want to say to her I'm grateful for many of the arrangements and the hard work that she's done here today. So without continuing to go on and on and on making a long, drawn-out speech, I just want to say to you I'm delighted to be here. I'm honored to be in your presence, and I very much appreciate the invitation to participate in this fine dedication. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Now you see what I mean. I say a, a stranger is a friend you haven't met. That's a friend. And if he was a stranger to you a few minutes ago, he's now your friend and you'll know it. I want to repeat what uh, uh, Attorney Silver said, that this is a man with more guts in political office than I know. And he's uh, faced all sorts of opposition, but he always stood pat on the side of the working people. And he's made a lot of changes in the Department of Labor for the benefit of the working people in this state, and we hope that he'll remain commissioner as long as he's able to breathe. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for being here very much. I just wonder if uh, Herb Mabry would like to have a word or two to say. Never refuse. Never refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Abercrombie. Brothers and sisters, it's indeed an honor and a privilege for me to have an opportunity to sit uh, up here with Abby today and the members of the laundry workers to dedicate a building that I know in their hearts they must be mighty proud of. You know, organized labor has come a long way in this state reminds me a lot of the uh, lady that lived in a small town, never had had an opportunity to do anything. She'd worked all of her life, saved her money, never got to go anywhere. So she's getting in middle age, you know, around 50, and she decided she better go down to the funeral home, talk to the funeral director and make her arrangements because she had no relatives. She went down and told him she had worked hard all her life and saved $15,000. She said, I would like to spend $14,000 of it on a funeral. He said, well, we can work that out. <laughs> so they planned it all. He says, now you have $1,000 left. Are you going to make any arrangement for that? He said, yes. He said, I know you're a man about town. You know all of the people. You don't go around talking. He said, as I told you, I have never had much fun and all. And said, I'm willing to pay this $1,000 if you can get some fine gentleman to come down to my house and spend the evening with me. He said, well, I think I can work that out. So he goes home and tells his wife about it. And she says, well, says, honey, says, you know, we're behind with our bills. We could <laughs> use that $1,000. He says, well, said, that's what I was thinking about myself. Said, it wouldn't really anyone know it but me and you and her. She said, I'll take you over there after dark, let you out, come back over in the morning and pick you up. He said, that'll be fine. So took him over and let him out. And the next morning, about 8 o'clock, went over and pulled up in the drive wind. She blew the horn. No one came out. Blew it the next time. No one showed up. About the third time, he stuck his head out the door and said, honey, come back and get me in 14 days. She's going to let the county bury her. <laughs>
so certainly, certainly we have, we have come a long ways. We have a long ways to go. We have a long ways to go like they was telling me about our friend Bill Morgan down in Savannah sitting out fishing. While he was there, the skin diver comes up pulls off the hood and everything, this beautiful young lady. She said, you having any luck? He said, no, I've been here all day and haven't had a, the first little nibble. She says, well, says, so that's bad. He said, I sure would like to have a cigarette. Said, I'm out of cigarettes. So she runs her hand down in that tight outfit and brings it out and gives him a cigarette. Talks on a few minutes and he says, good cold beer sure would be good. She run the hand down the other side and pulled out a cold beer. And then she walked up to Bill and said, I guess you want to play around a little. I said, don't tell me you got a set of golf clubs in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm real happy, real happy to be associated with what I consider one of the greatest organizations in the, America today, the trade union movement organized labor. I believe that the people of organized labor have a dedication that they will not stop in their strive to see that every person in the United States and the state of Georgia here that regardless of who you are and how much money you have, the color of your skin, that you have a right to enjoy a part of this life that is in America for us to enjoy just as much as the bankers of this country and the wealthy people. The organized labor people, the working people of this state built wealth to start with. This country was founded by poor people, and we have played a great part in it. And I will never stop as long as there's an ounce of breath in my body until I see that every man, woman, and child in this state can walk down the streets of our state with their head held high with dignity to enjoy a rightful place in our society that they so deserve. Congratulations, Abby. I know you have put a lot of work into it. You and your executive board and members, you're doing a good job. If the AFL-CIO can help you in any way, call on us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Herb Mabry. Uh, I got to tell this joke to make a point. Uh, this fellow driving up the road up here close to Rome, and they noticed the pond out of them on the side of the road is dry as a bone, all dried up completely. The guy sitting out there in the middle of it in a boat fishing. He thought that was rather, rather odd. He was driving up the road and he stopped at the store and he told the guy in the store, he said, you know something, so I saw something real odd a few minutes ago. I said, what was that? He said, you know this place down on the, on the road here, this lake is dried up? <clears throat> he said, yeah, I know. He said, I saw a man out there in a boat, not a drop of water around, fishing. He said, oh, yes, yeah. I, I know who that is, so that's my brother. He said, he's not quite right up here. He said, I think I'll go get my boat and go get him. <laughs> <laughs> I told that joke to make this point. When we ventured out into this, uh, started out on this project, some people thought that I wasn't quite right up here. But uh, the membership believed in it, and the executive board believed in it, my staff believed in it, so that's all I needed. With the work of the old man upstairs, he made it. And it made a dream come true. The next uh, person I want to introduce in the program that's about to come to an end is a good friend of mine, heads of the FLC, all civil rights department, Al Carey, and I'm sure he'd like to make a few remarks. Al. Thank you, Abby. Very briefly, it is hard to put into words the fact that this union, made up of workers who are, if you look at the scale of, of wages and conditions, have fought and struggled and have made it. And it is under the leadership of Abby and his staff that they have come all the way from that one dingy little room at the Kimball House to the place where we are today. And this is the story of organized labor and whatever else you can say about Abby and his union. 
you have recorded here today what it is that it's all about and that this that working people through their organization can put it together to be able to enjoy the fruits of their labor and their organization in these splendid headquarters I gotta tell you a couple of other things one is that I'm about to become a tenant of Abbey's. His old headquarters were so good that the AFL-CIO regional office and my office are about to move into it. Maybe you'll save us some space up here, Abby. Right. Secondly, I now know to come where to come for a shower when I'm in town. I don't have to check into a hotel. I just come up here and say, hey, Abby, how about let me use your shower in your office in there? Thirdly, I'm always looking for meeting space. I'm sure most of you who have organizational connections always are, too. We now know where, right smack in the middle of town, is going to be one of the best meeting places in town. And I'm sure that Abby will, will work with us in making the kind of use of this space uh, that it should be. Seriously, I want to add my congratulations to the laundry workers, to their leadership, and especially to Abby for what this means. It's a great day. I think it symbolizes the way that the South particularly is moving to recognize the efforts of working people in the progress and growth, not only of this city, but the entire region. Congratulations. Thank you all. I wonder if um, my office personnel is in the room. They all hold up your hand, please. Some of them have gone out. I want you to see some of the most beautiful young ladies in the city working in my office. If you don't want to see me, come by here and see them. <laughs> They'll enjoy having you. Uh, next, we cannot live in a building that hasn't been properly blessed. And we have with us today a great friend of the Launder Workers Union and a great friend of the working people in this state, in this city, in the community, uh, and Brother Father Morris. Uh, we asked him to come by today, and he said he wouldn't miss it. And we asked him to come by and bless the building for us. I'll call on Father Michael Morris. <clears throat> Like any good preacher, if I can take the opportunity for just a minute to extend my own congratulations and the congratulations and best wishes of the religious community in Atlanta to the laundry workers. I'm sorry I was late. I was doing other religious duties, marrying people all afternoon uh, over at Sacred Heart Church. As I look at Abby's building and the laundry workers' building, and I passed it several times, and before I knew what it was, I'd asked several people, I said, do you think that that's, uh, that's the laundry workers' new building? That's the laundry workers we know? And they'd say, I don't know. Well, having come into it today, I now know. And I, I want to say one thing to, to Abby and his executive committee and all those other people he said uh, uh, kind of led this project. They must have a much better method of collecting dues than I do. <laughs> I'm going to have to come over and learn something about this, how this whole operation goes. And I'm also glad to see that even though I came in late and in the middle of Herb Mabry's speech that I didn't slow him down or, uh, at all. Uh, I, I've never been able to do that even by coming to a meeting late. I'm reminded of one of the first times I was with Herb that we were out to lunch together discussing some problem that touched on the working man and the church at the same time. And before lunch started, uh, I noticed that Herb, I'd already dug into the barbecue, whatever we were having, and Herb wasn't doing anything, and, and so I figured I, I must have forgotten a prayer, you know. So I said, Herb, uh, go ahead and why don't you say a prayer for us? Um, and Herb said that. He said, all right. He said, but it reminds me of a story. He said, uh, he said I'm Baptist, you know, and there's a story. The Baptist preacher in the pulpit one day called on Brother Brown he, at the end of his, his uh, sermon. He said, Brother Brown, would you stand up and say a prayer for us? I don't know whether you remember telling me this or not. And, and uh, Brother Brown stood up and said, pray yourself, damn it, that's what we pay you for. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I guess I guess it's appropriate that that when the when a labor union really comes of age, as this one certainly has, and it's exemplified by such a beautiful and commodious building as this, that you call in somebody that's being paid to do the blessing. I'm. Uh, that's, it's a profession. The religion certainly, and a priest is a is a profession. But it's a good sense of the word profession, as a good sense of the word profession is used in the term of of a labor uh, a labor man, a labor organizer, a labor leader. Uh, it's one of the proudest professions in the world, and I'm very proud to have been uh, at least glancingly connected with the labor movement in Atlanta uh, since my ordination to the priesthood, and I hope that that uh, I will be here for many more years to see this union progress uh, even further than this, and that the whole uh, movement for the working man in this city will progress and, and, uh, and see what we in religion normally call paradise. But we'll, we've got a lot of work and labor to do before then. Now, I ask you to stand for the blessing. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be to this house and all who dwell in it. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, and the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you commanded your apostles to pray that peace might come to whatever place they entered. Sanctify, we implore you, by our ministry this building, meant for the working man. Pour into it the richness of your blessing and of your peace. May salvation come to this place as it came to the house of Zacchaeus when you entered it. Command that your holy angels guard it and drive away from it all the power of the enemy. Fill the leaders with the spirit of knowledge and wisdom and fear of you. Strengthen the membership with heavenly grace and your courage so that they may grasp with their minds and treasure in their hearts and carry out in their labors all the teachings that lead to salvation. And may all here please you by practicing every virtue so that they may one day be welcomed into your eternal home in heaven. We ask you this through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, who came into this world and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Father Morris. And uh, we, the building will be open until 5 o'clock. We want everyone to enjoy themselves, to continue to enjoy themselves. And we are uh, indeed grateful for your appearance here today. Thank you so much. Before we dismiss ourselves and start having a lot of fun, we don't want to slight anyone. I want the members of the executive board that are still here, will you please stand? And also the good union members here in the city of Atlanta, will you stand up and be recognized? We don't want to slight nobody. Uh, Mr. Jacobs has one word he wants to say, or a few words he wants to say about a, a matter that's important to all of us voters. Brother Jacobs. Mr. Chairman, members on the dais, it isn't that I have a word that I want to say, but I want to make an announcement. And while I'm on the mic, as Abby knows, I wouldn't hesitate to talk, too, especially when the program was so short. You know, our union meetings, they're lots longer than that. We, we, we hardly got started. As a matter of fact, John Fagan, who's over there on the end, who's the general secretary treasurer, he turned to me and said, is the program over? I said, Looks like it's about over. He said, well, District 5 came all the way down from the Midwest in Chicago. He said, we thought we'd have a couple of dozen speeches. I said, well, they haven't had me up there yet. <laughs> Before I make the announcement, let me point out something to you. The laundry workers, it's been said when they started in 1941, 
started off with the kind of a beginning that any small struggling union would start. And there was some description about the office of the desk. And I'm probably the only one other than Abby who's here who remember that desk because it was a rickety desk. They didn't tell you that when you sat down behind it, that if you put your elbows on it, that it shook. It wasn't stable, it wasn't firm. And they didn't tell you that the room that it was in, that when you walked in, that if you went in sideways, there was plenty of room. But if another one walked in, why, it was crowded. You see, that gave you an impression of having a big crowd there in the office. And it was from that kind of a beginning until where the laundry workers Local 218 is today that the growth of this union is represented. But you know, as the laundry union 218 grew, as it made its way, a peculiar thing could be noted. And part of it you saw here today. In the dedication of the building, you notice we have the Almighty here with us. We want to make sure that we're on the right road. Now, they've been talking about this business of hell. Well, I think the Almighty will take care of that. In addition to that, when we have any talks or any speeches or any dedication, the Department of Labor of the state is represented, and that's to make sure that when we do the things that we do in the laundry union, that our friends who are in the Labor Department know that we are here and alive and will help us. Yes, and when I look around, I also see that if we don't have the Almighty to take care of us, we've got the sheriff here. So that if any of us have any problems, that he'll take care of us. And then as I look around again, and I remember some of the real hard and tough days when we had to fight to have some bad laws stopped that were being passed against us, that there was one man in the state senate who had made a promise to us that he would vote against the right to work law. Those of us who were in the labor movement then asked him to fulfill that promise. And he said, well, he says, you know, my vote probably will be about the only vote against it. And we said, that's right. But we want that vote. And that man's here today, and that's Commissioner Brown of the Fulton County. And he stood by us then. And then it's that kind of friend that stand up with you that the laundry workers have had. And then if we needed any other help, as I look around, we've got the federal mediation represented here by Bill Pierce. And Bill's here to see that everything runs smoothly and we don't have a walkout or we don't have a dispute between the candidates and the would-be candidates. And I would presume that he's performed his function quite well so that we've had no problems at all. And then, you know, when we put up a building like this and you put it up in the county, why, you have to make sure that it fits within part of the zoning and part of the work that it has to be done, and we've got another commissioner, Shag Cates, over here, who I presume made sure that the zoning was taken care of correctly. And then just so is to make sure that this event becomes part of the history of the labor movement, we've got Dr. Gracie of the Southern Archives of the Labor Movement sitting over there in the corner who's been making notes, and I presume that it'll be in there, Abby, too, that this was another momentous day in the labor movement. And then to make sure that it can't be said that we were being politically in favor of one candidate or another, we have the lady who, who was the former national chair lady of our state, Marge Thurman, who's here from the Democratic Party, to make sure that we stay within the bounds of what we ought to do. And then I should say that since you've all admired the building so, you know it costs some money in order to put it up. And I suspect that we may have had to make a loan, Abby, somewhere 
And if that's so, that's the reason that Hugh Haynes of the National Bank of Georgia is here, to make sure that the loan was well taken care of. So you see, I was supposed to make an announcement about a telethon, but instead of making an announcement about a telethon, I think I have shown you why. I think I have shown you why Local 218 of the laundry workers has come to the position that it's in. Because it knew that in the community in which it lived, that it had to be a part of that community. That the members of Local 218, regardless of how little they might be able to earn at the beginning. And yes, Abby, I can remember when you and I were fighting before the War Labor Board to get 25 cents an hour. 25 cents an hour for the people who worked in the laundry unions. They weren't even making a quarter an hour. And now we've reached the day where we've passed beyond the $2 mark and are well on our way above it. And that's the kind of progress that this laundry workers union has made. That's the kind of progress under the leadership of Abby and the staff and the executive board that they've been able to achieve. And that's why it is that all of us are busting with pride, if you want to call it that, because we're tickled to death to have all of our friends here with us and to share with us in this day. And yes, at the same time, for me to go ahead and make that announcement that I was supposed to make, and that is that if you want to make Whoopi with us at the White House Motor Inn, on Cortland Street for the Democratic Telethon on Saturday and Sunday, June 29th and 30th. The kickoff starts tonight at 8.30. Come on down, get on the TV. On Sunday we begin at 4 o'clock. Let's support that Democratic Party, which if you will pardon me for being partisan because I'm a Democrat, and I know that most of our people who are in the trade union movement have known that this is the party for the working man, we want to raise some money. We don't have millionaires that can contribute to us and then go to Costa Rica and hide away so that we can't quite find out how much they contributed. Bring your dollar bills with you. Join in with us in the telethon. And God bless us all and let us live and enjoy this wonderful country of ours and this wonderful building of ours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Is there any other announcements? None other. We'll uh, enjoy the refreshments and continue our activities. Thank you. Uh, thank you.